I started making a video about how you can use the float in a creek like this one to figure out what kind of rocks you might encounter when you start mapping further upstream. Now that was all right, but the creek I chose had a lot of really interesting gossan float in it, like this, and the video turned into a story about how you can use classical prospecting techniques following a train of gossan upstream to make a discovery. Let's see how that unfolded. When you come across a decent sized creek like this one, particularly when you're working in a new area that you haven't seen much of already, it's always a good idea to have a look at the float that's in the bottom of the creek. Particularly when you're in a place where the bedrock is exposed close to the surface. Because where that happens, you'll find all of the heavy things close to the surface and you'll get a good idea of what's at the bottom of the creek. And in mineral exploration, heavy things are usually good. The other advantage of looking at float in creeks is that it's often fresh because it's been worn by the water. So you see the rocks before they get weathered, and what they look like when they're nice and pristine. And then it's a lot easier to figure out what they are when you're looking at the really weathered outcrops up on the hill. So we've got some nice tonalite here. It's uh, a little bit altered and a little bit foliated, but it's still clearly recognized. On the side of the creek bank there, I can see where it's weathered. It's a little bit less recognizable. And up on the hillside there, I know it's extremely difficult to figure out unless you already knew from seeing the fresh, unaltered rock exposed in the creek. This example here, where most of the float is this, which is a, a weakly altered tonalite, and that's not much of a surprise because that their outcrop is tonalite. But there's also quite a lot of butt quartz here, so I know that there's probably a lot of quartz veins outcropping further up the creek. And there's one or two heavy things in here, like this here rock there, which is very heavy, and I suspect, yep, it's, it's very magnetic. So that's magnetite quartz rock, maybe some kind of scarn or a biff or something. So I'll know to look out for those outcropping further up the creek. There's quite a lot of them here. And there's also some brown rocks, this one here, which, which are not magnetic. And they've got lots of pits and holes in them. So that's almost certainly a gossan after sulphide. And that could be really interesting. So I'll certainly look out for those when I'm mapping further up in the outcrop areas. And there's quite a few of these about too. There's another piece there. So I'm guessing that our crop's not very far away. So I've been following that train of magnetite and gossan float up this creek for about a kilometre now. And it's getting more and more common and the pieces are getting bigger and bigger. So we must be getting pretty close to the outcrop now. And the outcrop on the side of the creek is still all altered tonalite with no sign of veins or anything in it. So the outcrop must be outside the tonalite, I think. It's probably in something that's adjacent. It might be a scarn on the edge of the tonalite. But whatever it is, we must be close. And sure enough, 200 metres further up the creek, here it is in outcrop. We've just gone over the contact, the rocks down there in the gully are sheared metasediments and this is the outcrop right near the contact of the tonalite and it's a mixture of that magnetite and the gossan that we saw in the creek, which is a good thing. That's the type of thing you see when you've got a mineralized scarn. I also happen to know that there's a 2000 ppm copper anomaly in the soil just up the ridge there. so. I think we're onto the right stuff. It just shows you that classic old time prospecting techniques following float up a creek still works today and this outcrop was not on any map but there are still really good interesting things sticking out at surface and you can still find them using the old prospecting methods.